The following sermon by the Reverend Gilbert Tennant, 1735, is called a solemn warning to the secure world from the God of terrible majesty, or the presumptuous sinner detected, his pleas considered, and his doom displayed, being an essay in which the strong proneness of mankind to entertain a false confidence is proved. Beloved brethren, you have often heard your danger described. You have had many a call by the word and providence of God, as well as by your own consciences. And are you not awakened yet? O oh, strange, O oh, mournful! Others have been through grace convinced and changed effectually by the means you enjoy. And won't these be a witness against you at the tribunal of Christ? What will you be able to say in your own vindication? Then won't blushing and confusion cover you and guilty silence be your answer? What does the word prove a savior of life to life to others and of death unto death to you? O oh, dreadful, what do you intend to do, dear brethren? Will you sleep forever? Will you sleep till death and hell awake you? Or do you think that you may go to heaven in the slumber of carnal security? If you do, you shall find yourselves miserably mistaken, as is fully proved in the following tract. Be not deceived, brethren, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent, and they only take it by force. Matthew 11:12. Let me address you as the prophet Elijah did the people of Israel in 1 Kings 18:21. How long shall you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, then follow him. Or is the shipmaster to Jonah, who was fast asleep in the midst of a great tempest, Jonah 1, 5. What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be, he will think upon us that we perish not, verse 6. It is a just and pertinent note of Mr. Henry upon this passage of Scripture that those who sleep in a storm may be well asked what they mean. Brethren, you sleep in a greater storm than Jonah did. That storm only concerned the body, but this a precious soul. That storm was a temporal storm, but this is an eternal death. You are, whether you know it or not, sensibly every moment ready to be swallowed up by the boisterous billows of God's justly incensed ire, and a vessel of your souls like to be broken by a dreadful inundation of his vindictive fury and revenge. Romans 12:19. And yet will you sleep? What metal are you made of? What God do you fear? Or are you deaf to all the menaces of heaven? Will not the terrors of an eternal God and an eternal hell make you afraid? What mean you? Are you yet wholly lost to sense, to reason, and to conscience? Are you degenerated into beasts or petrified into stones? Are you covered with the Leviathan scales that no arrow from the bow of God will pierce you? May not the example of Jonah's fellow mariners make you ashamed? Jonah 1.5 then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man to his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But perhaps you mock at fear, and are not affrighted, though the heavens look black and God's lightnings and thunders from blazing, trembling Sinai flash and groan and roar hideously, though God's law condemn you. And your own consciences tell you that you shall surely perish if you die in the same state you are now in. Yet you boldly, or rather shall I say impudently, or stupidly, brave it out in the face of an angry heaven and run upon the thick bosses of God's bucklers and are not afraid when God's great ordinance is leveled at your naked bosom. You won't be persuaded by any importunity to cast these goods out of the ship, as the mariners did, which will have retained sink it in death. I mean your darling lusts, which you must forsake or perish. Matthew 5.29 Again the affrighted mariners cried everyone to his God. 
verse 5. Why don't you awake poor souls and cry every one of you to God with the utmost vehemence, as the disciples of Christ did in a storm, when the waves were like to overwhelm the vessel? Lord, save us, we perish. Matthew 8, 25. Or as Peter's hears in Acts 2, 37. Men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? Sirs, suffer me to accost you in the language of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 5, 14. Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. 1 Peter 4, 3, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. But I can't in regard of you add the apostles' reason, Romans thirteen eleven, For now is your salvation nearer than when you believed. No, I am obliged in faithfulness to God and love to you to tell that, inasmuch as you did not and now do not believe that your damnation is nearer than when you first heard the gospel of Christ and salvation by his blood. Because of your unbelieving obstinacy and presumptuous security, awake, awake sinners, stand up and look where you are hastening, lest you drink of the hand of the Lord, the dregs of the cup of his fury the cup of trembling, and wring them out, Isaiah fifty one seventeen. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep and howl, Joel 1, 5. For what can you expect, so continuing, but to drink of that cup of trembling I but now mentioned? Awake, ye profane swears, and remember you will not get a drop of water to cool your cursing, cursed tongues in hell when they and you shall flame in the broad burning lake. Luke 16.24 God has said he will not hold you guiltless that takes his name in vain. Exodus 27 Awake you unclean adulterers and whoremongers, and remember that without a speedy repentance your dismal abode shall be ever with unclean devils. The soul of a God shall be avenged upon you. Jeremiah 5.8 and 29. Awake you Sabbath breakers and reform, or God will break you upon the wills of his vengeance, and torture you eternally upon the rack of his justice. Nehemiah 13. And let all other sorts of profane sinners be entreated to awake out of sleep, and consider their danger. Awake you covetous, griping nables, and read what the Apostle James says to those things that shall come upon you. The rust of your gold and silver shall be a witness against you. You have lived in pleasure upon earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Here we may note, by the way, that those who live like beasts here and will not be induced by any persuasive to repent, reform and act like men, shall howl like beasts hereafter without being hurt or pitied. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, Proverbs 1, 26. Awake ye secure moralists and lifeless, sapless formalists who are strangers to the power of experimental religion. Remember your shadowy appearances can't deceive the rain-trying God, Galatians 6, 7. Nor your dry leaves of husky, spiritless duty secure your guilty souls from an astonishing, overwhelming inundation of his high and terrible displeasure, Matthew 5, 20. Awake every one of you that are yet in a Christless, unconvinced state. Are you not ashamed to sleep all the day in sloth? while some are trembling, troubled, and distressed about their souls, who are not greater sinners than yourselves, nay, perhaps not near so great. What? Sleep? While others are crying night and day with tears and heavy groans to God for pardoning mercy, who have no more precious souls than you. Sleep? 
while others are laboring hard and taking heaven by storm. What? Sleep? While some are traveling fast to the heavenly Jerusalem and rejoicing in the way with joy unspeakable and full of glory. What? Will you draw the curtains of a carnal security and false hope about you and sleep to death and hell, even when the meridian sun of the gospel shines full in your face? And life and immortality is brought to light in God and Christ, His ministers, word, providences, and your own consciences are ringing a loud alarm, a peal of thunder in your ears to awake you, that you may consider your ways and turn your feet to God's testimonies. Will you sleep with fire in your bosoms, the unpardoned guilt of sin, with the curse of God upon your souls? the heavens frowning upon you and shut against you, the burden earth traveling under you and hell yawning wide to devour and consume you. May I not say to you as Moses to Israel, Deuteronomy 29.4, Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. Oh, is it not to be feared that God in justice has left you to a spirit of slumber? Because you shut your eyes against the light, John 3, that you should sleep and never awake, Jeremiah 51, 57. And I will make drunk her princes and her wise men and her rulers and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not awake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Proverbs 6, verse 9. How long will you sleep, O sluggard? When will you arise out of your sleep? Gilbert Tennant, 1735